All right, well, I got some news for you. They're calling these refugees new Americans because, you know, we can't call it refugees. That's a dirty word. Congo, you know, all the somewhat problem countries. Uh, we're just going to let them come over here, start businesses. They'll, they'll be all right. Now, so far, our Cleveland has 1,500 of these refugees. I, I mean, new Americans in their doorstep. And on top of that, they have what's called the help from the Biden administration called the Federal Office of Refugee Resettlement Program. That has been, been going on for the past five years. So figure it out. Joe's only been elected for four years. So that means it started under Trump. And in this program, uh, they have 30 small um, entrepreneurial businesses that are donating $50,000 for startup capital and credit building loans. And in total, 89 participants have started small businesses including three of them in the greater Cleveland area ain't that nice now the majority of the participants are in Buffalo and in New York City and some are even in California, but only three in Ohio. Oh, that's too bad. Only three. The governor's office of Ohio says in the next 10 years, they project a 6% increase in population. Oh, that's higher from the 1.6% decrease from 07 to 2017. And according to the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, that Ohio may generate 605 million dollars per year in economic growth to the Ohio area alone, according to a non-profit uh, service in Columbus, Ohio, called the Community of Refugees and Immigration Services, that also states that there will be 15% more migrants in the United States population with a uptick of 25% more migrants in the Ohio population alone in the next five years. Great. That's, that's just great. So in other words, you know, all you Ohioans and Americans that are going to your jobs, that are going uh, to college, you're going to be now in a race with this refugee, new American competition. And you got to compete against that. They're the ones getting the job and you ain't. So, Doing some other uh, research, I decided to look up uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And since I looked up Cincinnati, Ohio, I decided to look up Tyson's. And Tyson's food in Cincinnati, Ohio says that they project to allow in their facility a hundred and twenty thousand refugees across their uh, businesses 
Great. They can all be plucking chickens together then. And some of those uh, refugees are pretty good at that. So that's what they're probably looking at. Now, what am I taking to this? Um, I got into an argument at work uh, about, you know, uh, the refugees and Donald Trump and stuff and how tr Trump's going to change this. He's going to go after all this, these people and everything. And I'm just going to lay it on the line. I might lose some subscribers for this, but putting your faith in one man is insane. Um, even if he's is a good leader. It starts at the local level and it starts at you doing something about it. Uh, to be aware of what your politicians in your communities are doing and voice your opinion. And if you cannot do that, try to get your law enforcement on your side to put pressure on those politicians not to allow this in your communities. Because once once these refugees, new Americans, whatever you want to call them, in there, they're in there. That's it. And these small businesses, these medium businesses, they're all taking advantage of this. Like the one in New York that dispersing food as a nonprofit, but only did medical supplies and they got a grant for $43 million and completely bombed it, got people sick, and um, it was horrible what they did to those refugees. But at the same time, the money was there, so they took advantage of the situation. So that's what these business owners are doing right now. And we have to tell them no. Now, Cincinnati, Ohio has a migrant crisis. And because of this migrant crisis, they put a website together to help the migrant population. It's called Cincinnati Compass. In it, you can get resources, you can get data and research, you can get stories that way you you know, if you're a migrant, you understand what you're going through, what uh, things you need, and how to help. Um, it also has events. It has voluntary events. It has investments. It has news, employer research. That way your employers know where they can locate a migrant and possibly hire them. And we're going to get to that. Now, the events has a calendar. The events also tell you, hey, where's the next meeting place? Where's the next meet and greet for cookouts or celebration of cultures in Cincinnati, Ohio? But... The one thing that I thought was interesting was the employee and employer one. Now, you go on this website, it says employer researches. Now, the employer wants to make the refugee feel welcome. So, to make them feel welcome, uh, they're going to have workshops. That way you can engage in the refugee and tell him what jobs are available for him in the community. Ain't that nice? Not, not the regular, um, you know, Jane and John down the street who, you know, are breaking bread and might be uh, close to being on welfare because they can't afford rent but they're Ohio citizens now we're just gonna get the refugee now 
One thing I thought in particular about this too is Tyson's Foods. It has sweared a allegiance to the refugee crisis and they're going to bring in a hundred and twenty thousand of them for their facilities. Ain't that great? I mean, it makes sense, you know. They're a poultry company and I'm sure that they need a lot of chicken plucking and they're going to get some people from the Republic of Congo who knows how to chicken pluck or, or um, Afghanistan that understands what chicken plucking is. So, yeah, they'll probably increase their profit that way. Wouldn't doubt it. Might get the fast chicken plucker refugee in town. Who knows? But the other uh, thing I found that was interesting was Cleveland, Ohio. They have a website that is called The Land. Ain't that nice? Now, Cleveland, Ohio decided to welcome some refugees on July 4th of 2024. That's right. Well, everyone was at home celebrating, you know, with their family, fireworks, and everybody in the refugees saying, come on down. So, Cleveland, Ohio has gotten people from Congo. They've gotten people from Afghanistan. They've gotten people uh, from... Um, Venezuela. <clears throat> They've gotten people from Ukraine, which, for all you that do not know, some Ukrainians are living in senior assistant homes and getting a nice little paycheck out of the deal. So, ain't that great? Now, a landscaping company in the greater Cleveland area is using some refugee workers from Congo to help in their delivery supplies with Uber. That great Uber's doing their part. So is DoorDash, by the way. Now, Since um, 2019, Cleveland has let in 500 refugees a year. And according to the Federal Office of Refugee Settlement, over the past five years, the program has partnered with 30 entrepreneurs to generate $50,000 for startup and capital credit loans. So you know the banking industry is behind this also. Ain't that nice? In total, 89 participants have started small businesses, including three in Cleveland, Ohio that are brick and mortar stores. So, you know, they're going to be robbed very soon. The rest of the participants are in the Baltimore area, New York area, Cincinnati, Ohio area. And I, I couldn't believe it when I read this. But um, Nashville, Tennessee area and Chicago area and, and of course California. But Cleveland gets three. So good job. Now combined with all of the brick and mortar refugee refugee uh, shiny town uh, small businesses Ohio 
projects, now this is their projection, that Cleveland population will be going up by 6%. That is a uptick of 1.6% decrease from 2017. According to the Federal Reserve of Banking and the Secretary of Labor and the Ohio Economic Advisory Board, the businesses are going to generate $605 million per year to impact the Ohio economy. Now, yeah. so that's just one story that I, I read out of Ohio that I thought, wow. The other story is out of Mansfield, Ohio. Now, Mansfield, Ohio is of refugees for interpreting. Now, if you're good at English and you are okay with living in Mansfield, Ohio, then there's a job for you because they're looking for interpreters and caseworkers. Now, your immigration status uh, is going to be fast-tracked in Mansfield, Ohio, where you could possibly make in Richland County, for example, $19 to $31 an hour, and it'll be full-time. But this is for the refugee only. So they're starting to do that in, in um, Mansfield, Ohio. And also, there is a website that is called uh, Christ. That's C R I S Ohio. And they have a nice little website that says that they're working for the immigration and refugees of the community to open up a positive and in internship for the greater uh, community. There is a home page about service, involvement, research, news, contacts, and how to donate. No frozen foods. Can't get to pizza rolls to the refugees. So, on this website, it also helps employers better know their refugees by conducting workshops. And these workshops will go over, you know, the refugees' status, jobs that are available, their rights in the work, workplace, and how to get involved by either volunteering services at a local business or working for that business. Ain't that great? I mean, Ohio and America is doing so much for all these people and uh, not so much for their own. Mansfield, Ohio has a new influx of people coming from Cuba, Honduras, Venezuela, Colombia. So that's all I have for now. Uh, if you guys like this content, Please give a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button if you would, please. Bye.